Hi everyone, it's time for another Tuesday video and uh, I am making this intro on the day that this video is being published. Uh, the others were made uh, a couple weeks ahead. So um, today I was lucky enough that I had some video already prepared and just needed an intro. It's been a really busy uh, and hectic past couple of weeks. On July 22nd, my dad uh, died of a massive heart attack, and so I jumped in the car and drove to the other side of the state, and I was over there uh, that entire week um, working on his things, and now I've been writing his obituary. So it's been a really hard and sad time, but I'm not going to let that stop me from uh, giving you this footage. This is going to be about my l'elephant, who is um, a post-ultimate uh, molt, male tarantula. So he survived his, his, his ultimate molt, became a mature male, and then um, months and months later, probably close to a year later, he molted again, and he survived. The only thing that was damaged during that molt were his pedipalps, so the palpal bulbs were torn off, so he ended up with these two little little prongs um, on his on his pedipalps. So I'm going to talk about him, and then after that I have a nice feeding for you, uh, quite a variety of tarantulas in this one. I will see you again next Tuesday, so I hope you enjoy. Thank you. L'elephant, he is a post-ultimate molt male. So what that means is he molted into a mature male with hooks and palpal bulbs and he was ready to go he was weaving sperm webs and he was like that I think it must have been for about a year maybe and then he started molting I was very surprised I didn't know what was happening at first and I thought you know he was dying but he was molting and I helped him through it I did have to pull parts of his um, if I remember right, some pieces off of his abdomen. And he could not get his pedipalpal bulbs to come through the molt, so he did end up losing them. So he has these little uh, reddish colored little sticks where he used to have his palpal bulbs. Um, he ended up being very lanky, um, very spindly legs, as you can see. He's quite the character, he seems to have made a bit of a name for himself on Instagram. Everyone always wants to know how he's doing. He kept eating after he molted, and uh, I'm not sure how much time has gone by now, but it could be, gosh, six, six months maybe. It could be that he's been a post-ultimate male for six months, and he's starting to lose a little bit of the Satay on his abdomen and he's really slowing down here which you know I have said that about him several times in the past and and turned out to be wrong there was one point where I did have to kind of squish up his food for him because he just seemed really weak and then he recovered and bounced back and was attacking his food again so we will just see today if he's interested I kind of have a hunch that he's not going to be, but I could be totally wrong. Sometimes I really don't want to interfere with the tongs because they, they know
Come on, take it, take it. Well, he definitely showed some interest. Come on, yes, go for it. So sometimes you see you can offer with the tongs and they kind of know and they're not so interested. But see right now he's feeling around, he's looking for that roach. He's definitely wanting to eat and that is a very positive sign. So there he is, he's crouched right over the roach. But he knows it's there, he's feeling around. See, he's moving his chelicerae a little bit. I can try employing a trick. I'm taking my trusty wire that's it's been bent so it's not sharp. And see if I can't touch the roach without touching him. And maybe that will be enough. Here is Walken, and Walken is a Nandu tripepi, um, and she is quite a booger. She's um, very temperamental, but fun. I'm not saying that in a bad way. She's already got her fangs out um, <laughs> on the edge of the enclosure, ready for whoever's going to try to burst her door down. <laughs> yes, I jumped, even though I knew what to expect. So hopefully she's hungry and not just having a fit. All right, well, the food fell, her roach fell. she'll turn toward anything that moves in her enclosure. She's really pretty. I love her. But she does not like unwelcome visitors. And it doesn't seem that she's hungry right now, but let me try again because sometimes she's just in a mood. <laughs> oh, you silly thing. So she's showing some posture here that indicates she's interested in the roach. The roach is underneath her, but of course it's playing the frozen game. And if it moves, I think she'll probably go for it. She looks ready. And there we have it. Yep, she's got quite the fangs on her too. So I'm removing the other roach that she didn't eat. Maybe she'll do a happy dance. I don't know. She was on the edge of her enclosure looking out. It's interesting because when it's time for a feeding, there's no real set schedule, but it's like the tarantulas know. I don't know if the roaches give off some kind of pheromone, you know, when they're afraid or when they die but I get several tarantulas that will come to the edge of their burrows or sit right next to their wall of their enclosure, almost climbing it, and they really look like they're ready to feed. So I really do think there's something there. I don't think it's just coincidental. Sometimes I see those that I don't see very often at all, and that leads me to believe that there is something they're sensing. All right, Walken is definitely my favorite uh, Nandu, Nandu tripepi. She has been out and a very good display tarantula since she was a sling. The Chromatis, uh, she does not come out a lot and um, until recently she mostly hid all through her slinghood and I'm going to attempt to feed her next. So in this enclosure, we have Hera. Um, she is my Nandu tri, or yes, my my Nandu 
not mandu tripepi, mandrochromatis, and that's gross. That means she put a bolus in her water bowl. Um, I'm just going to give her a clean one. She was also out before I moved her enclosure, so she's, I think she's hungry. She was one of the ones that was looking like she knew what was going on and that it was time to eat. Now her name, Hera, um, this is the goddess of women, also the goddess of temper. And she does have a bit of a temper, but I would say that Walken has more of a temper. So I'm going to move her pretty hibiscus here. She's inside of her hide. Um, see if she'll come out for a dubia. Well, maybe she'll come out the other end of her enclosure. Hopefully she doesn't just run out and escape. It's possible. She's a little flighty. So my experience with my nandus, they, they are kind of skittish. She's turned around. She's coming this way. I don't know if she caught the roach or not. I'll offer her another one. Wait, maybe she did. Yeah, she caught it, but she's inside of her her lair, so we don't get to see it today. I was hoping that she would come out. Maybe she will yet. Come on, girl. Well, we got to see a little bit. Yeah, just enough to tell me off. So here we have another little old man. Um, he is a Davis Pentalorus. His name is Atlas. Um, and he has been with me for a year. Uh, a little bit over a year, I think. And he was also... A mature male when I got him and the previous owner really didn't expect him to last through the winter but here he is it's summertime um, first he had one pedipalp fall off and so he, he only had one and I thought that it was because of the female that I have struck him because she did attempt to strike him uh, during uh, the last attempted pairing uh, and then shortly after his pedipalp just fell off but apparently the little guy is so old that his pedipalps are coming off on their own. Uh, he just lost the second one the other day. Um, I can show it to you. Here it is. So this is the poor little thing. Um, yeah, he's got his palpal bulb on there. And there's his little hook. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there you go. Yeah. There it is. So he's not able to breed at all. I did have a male here on loan. Um, and they did have a pairing and I tried to pair another time and they were not, she was just not interested and I didn't want to take a chance. Now for him, he has been looking pretty scruffy lately. I am going to give him some water in a substrate see if that interests him at all I'm not sure what he's doing there is a roach there that I put in I killed it for him and I don't know if he's eating on it there's also a little bit of mold He is. That's wonderful news. So this roach that I killed and put in there, he's eating it. Um, or it's one that he found that he's eating. So that's great. Anytime a mature male is eating, that is 
That's good, especially one whose petapalps are falling off. I mean, just imagine if he molted uh, just like l'elephant and he ended up with new um, little nubs for petapalps again. I mean, just imagine if he made it through his post-ultimate molt, maybe because he doesn't have petapalps to impede him from emerging from that new, into that uh, new, new exoskeleton. That would be amazing, but we'll see. His little bum does look very small and shrunken, but uh, stranger things have happened. Let's just wish Atlas good luck. So this gorgeous girl is my B. albiceps, and she um, came from palp friction uh, last year after I had wanted a brachypelma albiceps for a long time. Um, I had acquired one, a, a, a sling, um, from Twisted Silk up here in the Northwest, and that was at a show. And that sling is one that I fed in the last video before this one. Um, but this girl, I got her not too long after I found the sling, and I was just so excited I had to have her. And she's growing slowly, but she just had her first molt here with me. And I'm thinking <clears throat> she might possibly be hungry. Uh, so let's try that out. I'm not going to offer her any something that's too big because just like the B Classy, these do tend to be a little skittish. And that roach is like, I am out of here, see ya, bye bye. I'm thinking maybe she's not hungry yet. Um, I'm try one a little larger. She looks very good, her abdomen's pretty full, so I'm not really worried about her starving or anything. Yeah, she's not hungry. That little pumping herself up is just saying, hey, you know go away or run beneath me and go on your way so beautiful beautiful girl maybe next time we'll get a feeding video of her this is my female B. albiceps or <laughs> this is my female davis pentaloris her name is neith and this stands for the egyptian hunt war mother goddess and she is hopefully gravid from the male that I paired her with. His name was Romeo. He came from another tarantula hobbyist um, who lives not too far from me. So all I can really do now is wait and see if she's gravid. She hasn't shown um, interest in food. Uh, some people say that they increase, uh, their appetites increase once they're gravid, but Oftentimes I'm finding that it's the opposite and they're not as hungry. Um, maybe it just depends on the species, I don't know. But I can always test her and see. Alright, that seems like a feeding response to me. Unless she thought that was the male who tried to visit her the other day. Oh, now we play the waiting game. She looks so good because she did molt uh, not too long ago. And she was paired after that. Once before, she produced a sack and I found her eating it, but it looked like it was bad anyway. The eggs were all moldy and they were all black, so... Um, well, she let it go. Um, I think I'm just going to leave her to try and hunt for this roach on her own. Um, and that's that. G. Porteri. She is 
usually pretty hungry. I have no idea how old she is. Just got her last year as an adult. She does come out of her burrow a lot. Um, you can see this is a 10 gallon tank. She is pretty much webbed up the top of it all the way across. She has a bit of an attitude. Probably not one that I would attempt to hold. Let's see. Um, her name is Luna. Here's little thing. She's a grandma stole of Procrepes and she was my first tarantula which I so thoroughly researched, um, wanting to get one that was, you know, for a beginner. I was a bit of an arachnophobe. A little thing though, uh, once she hit a certain age, she was very unpredictable and uh, at times acted like an OBT. Let me see if she's hungry though. She's been hanging out near the edge, acting like she might be, so let's try her out. Yep, that's what she wanted, all right. She's been over there scratching. She knew it was feeding time. Well, there you go, little thing. You are satisfied now. I do have a male um, on loan to breed with her, but she has shown zero interest and I've tried multiple times to pair them. I don't know if she needs one more molt. Uh, she might not be quite mature, but it just has been a no-go. There's that little old man, G Poker Pace, um, right now, and he still looks really good. Um, hopefully he'll take a dubia today. I'm gonna give him a kind of a large one. Oh, no, 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 little boy. I don't want you to go out. I want you to eat. Can you eat? Nope. Definitely not what he's interested in today. He's got a nice full water bowl, but like I said earlier, with these guys, I'm just going to give him a little water in his substrate over here. Probably scrambling to get out so he can go find a female, but he looks, he looks pretty good. His abdomen looks nice. Um, hopefully... He'll hold on until little thing is ready. So this little one is Poet. This is a suspect female, Brachypoma classy. Um, and I just pulled a molt out of here. So I'm not sure when this occurred. It could have been within the last um, few days. But I'm going to test and see if there's any kind of feeding response. Nope. <laughs> That's just a pretty typical skittish little bee glossy there. So this one will be fed um, in the next round and give it some time for the exoskeleton to heal up. Very beautiful species though. This is the enclosure of my Centroides vitatus, which is a scorpion. Um, this is a uh, striped bark scorpion from... Texas. It looks like it has a mealworm beetle that was in the water, which you wouldn't think that would happen because I had crushed its head, but there you have it. You saw the little guy, I think, a minute ago coming out. So maybe this one will be able to hunt for this dubia on its own. 
It seems to be eating well. I've had it for, gosh, I think it's been over a year now. It's creeping around. There it comes. You might actually get to see a feeding. I've never seen this one eat before. Nope, I'm leaving. Yeah, I'll just relocate it, just in case. Yeah, mostly what I see from this scorpion is just running away. <laughs> but, um, we did get to see him. And there's another dubia in there. I'm going to put that one back in with the others so it can eat. It's probably been in there for a while. This is the enclosure for my vinegaroon. And um, I actually do have a video uh, looking back in the past here where this one molted on camera. But now the enclosure is set up in such a way that um, it has dug itself into a den be below. And while I could look up underneath with a flashlight and tell that it was getting ready to molt, I was not able to capture that this time and I didn't want to disturb it. But it looks like, from what I can see underneath, uh, it indeed has molted. So now I just have to wait for, for it to come out again. This is my Crypsodromus species Costa Rica. <clears throat> She's a few years old. I bought her when she was a year and a half. She's molted several times in my care. Um, she recently molted, as you can see, although she may very well be hungry right now. She has quite an attitude. Um, she's a dwarf species, uh, but I would really recommend them. They are out a lot and have a good appetite. Um, so if you like dwarf species, I would definitely look into this one. Um, I thought that I had written down what her name is. Oh yes, her name's Dahlia. That's right. Um, she probably is hungry right now. She looks hungry. Oh, well, um, Maybe not. I don't know. Are you a girl? Are you hungry? I don't know if she's going to try to eat or not. She has a, a burrow over here. You can see it. She just doesn't go in it. She does not go in there. Well, she's got a roach in here. If she's hungry later, she can go for it. It's also possible, and I, I do think she molted over a week ago, so she should be ready, but maybe she just isn't. I really hesitate to take the roach out yet. She looks like she's put on a little bit of size as well. Yeah, I don't think she's ready to eat yet. Her little abdomen's kind of small. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it in there for her for later. This is a Seropagabus albostriatus, um, Thai zebra tarantula. It's an old world. And this one's webbed in. Um, you can see the entrance there. It's got a little turret and webbed itself in and I suspect um, in pre-molt. I don't know if this one is male or female because um, the molts um, disappear and are chewed up. And if I do see any pieces of it, it's just chunks. So far, um, unsexed. And um, let's see here. I thought that I had a, um, yes, the name of this one is Jade. 
and hopefully we will get to see jade someday because they are very very pretty this enclosure belongs to my h gigas h gigas um the cameroon red baboon tarantula she molted not too long ago um i think she's having a longer duration between you know when she's molted and when she's eating um, because usually she has a really good appetite but lately she's not been too hungry you can see her down in there moving she's grown quite a bit um, since her last molt she's getting those nice big thick hind legs that these baboons get so at least we got to see her but uh no feeding today I think I will drop a roach down into her burrow, you know, for later because I suspect, you know, she might be just being shy at the moment. Um, and that's that. In this enclosure, uh, I have an Aphonopelma by Coloratum. Uh, this one is named Remy. And I saw Remy a minute ago, but when I moved the enclosure, there was a, a sudden hustle to get away. So I know Remy is inside. But I'm not really seeing any feeding interest. I'm sure you've got your little opening exactly how you want it. Okay, so we can see Remy in there. Um, I'm going to try to find a smaller roach because I think that one was a little bit big. But then I have ones that are too small, so something in between. Okay. Well, <laughs> not really what I was expecting. So you gotta let go of the tongs, you little bugger, and go inside your, there you go, go in there and get your food. Well, that's that experience, and I think Remy's going in there to find the food now. So I hope those tongs didn't taste very good. This is my Ketopelma oliviseum, and um, this one can be kind of skittish and haven't really been interested in food for a while. So let's see what kind of mishap concoction we can come up with here. <laughs> Me being skittish, that's what. get it. Really pretty little dwarf tarantula that is one of the only tarantulas found in Europe. I think it is actually the only genus found in Europe and it is actually a baboon. So definitely saw some interest in the food but it got away so maybe later but let's try another one come on go get it this one would hide out a lot <clears throat> when it was a sling and now it's out all the time. Looks very healthy.
Okay, well, apparently not today, but this one will be free to hunt down those two roaches if it sees fit, and uh, next time around I'll remove them if they're still in there and offer another one so we can keep the cycle going. This is Peekaboo. She's my LP, and she used to be in a 10 gallon tank, but she was climbing it and chewing on the lid a lot. Now she knows it's open, so she's waiting. She wants to eat right now. She's a little plump, so I'm going to offer her a male dubia, which I'm sure she's going to be very pleased to just take. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. I think I jumped a little bit. She's quite a big girl. Crunch, crunch. You'll probably get a little bit of a happy dance. I need to be able to get that bolus out of there. There's a bolus down there, but good luck with that right now. And refilling her bowl. It's kind of in a, an awkward position for me to put the entire pitcher in there. So I'm going to try to use... Oh, that's only... Oh, that's me dumping water right on the floor. All this crap going on in the background while you're watching her and it's just me being clumsy like usual. See if she'll let me give her water without grabbing this. She's definitely interested. That's it. She doesn't need to eat more, as you can see. Do I even dare reach down there and try to get that bolus? I did it. All right. On to the next one. This is my Cochiana Brunapis um, Libitina, and she is known as the goddess of corpses and funerals. I know that sounds morbid, but it is necessary. Um, and I'm going to um, fill up her water bowl and see if she would like a dubia. I saw her the other day, um, she looked really good, so whether or not she's hungry, first I have to find my tongs. I'm not going to give her anything too big. Her entrance is right here, I'm probably just going to let it go in there. And then we'll get to see feet. Looks like it's starting to dig. I'm going to turn the camera off so that I can get it to go a little farther into her burrow. Last one for today, and uh, this is my Carpectura Caffrariana, and she is named Ishtar, uh, and she's pretty elusive. She doesn't come out. I'm really I've had her for about two years now, and she uh, stays in her burrow, so we're not going to get to see her. I just did a peek at her. She looks really round, like maybe she's in pre-molt, and she's also webbed over her, her entrance right there. So that, that really tells me she's going to molt sometime soon. So um, that, will be, that will be it for this video. And uh, I will go ahead and uh, 
<clears throat> do another shelf in the next video. Let me show you what I did today so you have a good idea. This is my mess on the floor. I fed this shelf um, and all of these and these down here and um, some that were on the bottom. So uh, these guys as well were in this video and I haven't done the babies. The babies are up here, the embalfori are up here. That'll be for another time.